Uh, we are really excited about um, being here and this, this whole new, um, this whole new, not just the stage, but this whole new era in the life of our church as, as the Wintersville United Methodist Church and as God's people here. Uh, before I begin my sermon, I want to, some of you have seen, there's some folks with shirts on, the um, celebration shirts. If you didn't get one yet and would like one, they're up in the, the hallway, the information hallway up there. And we're asking if you can wear those on the weekend, next weekend, as much as possible. That would be great. Um, also for the, the meal tonight, it's just kind of, it's casual dress, so it's not fancy. The meal is going to be really nice, but it's casual dress. And I, I made a mistake on the announcement. Those helping in the kitchen should be here by four o'clock. And then the guys that are helping serve should be here by five o'clock. And so many people have helped in so many ways to, to make this happen. But I really would like to especially thank Kitty. We're, oh, there, Kitty's kind of in her same spot. Yeah, so. Uh, Kitty is one of the ones that's really gone the extra mile in, in many different ways with, with the whole celebration and many other ways as well. It, but if you would just roll, uh, before again I begin the sermon, the yellow insert, the bright yellow insert in your bulletin, um, just again, this weekend, we hope you'll, you'll come, participate, invite other people. Friday night, 5.30 to 6.30 will be appetizers and just kind of a tour of the facility. We have 4,000 appetizers coming, so that's eight per person if there's 500 people. Um, so that's, that's kind of what we're thinking. We really don't know how many, but we're, we're really excited about it. The dedication of this facility will take place right around 6.30, and that's going to be probably about a 20-minute service of dedication. And then we're going to have a celebration concert of praise, just thanking God for his goodness. It's going to be a wonderful concert. And so we hope you'll be here Friday night and invite others. Saturday morning, the mission projects, there will be five or six mission stations set up. Anyone of any age and any skill and ability can come and be a, a part of that. So uh, that Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon in the gym will be skills and drills again for all ages. And there'll be, you know, different sports skills and then some challenges and prizes uh, on Saturday afternoon. Saturday night, our guest speaker is Alex McFarland. He speaks all over the country and, and actually is an international um, speaker. I talked to him once this week and I'm going to talk to him again this, um, this coming up week. But uh, just, he, he loves the Lord. He's, um, God has his hand on his ministry in a very powerful way. And really, Saturday night, it says in the, on this paper, a celebration revival. It is revival, but it's, it's revitalization of our faith, uh, faith and just lighting that fire once again. And so we, uh, again, please come and be a part of that on uh, Saturday evening. Sunday morning, uh, he'll be our guest speaker here and, and also at our traditional service. And then Sunday night is our youth and children's um, special event. It's, again, it's not just for our kids here at our church. It's for anyone that would like to come and be a part of that. And we're really looking forward to the, that from five to seven on Sunday evening. I was just, um, I actually just kind of choked up here while we were singing for the two of the younger ladies from our congregation standing here in the front row. You know, just most of you couldn't see them probably, but just praising the Lord with their hands raised. And it really, um, it, it does a heart good just to see that. So we're, we're grateful for them. Um, I think, is there anything else like that that needed to be said? Don't stop, John. Said, okay. All right. We'll try to shift gears here. How many of you would be excited about a 45 minute to an hour commute every day to work? <laughs> Dave Schaefer said yes, because he could listen to things in the car, but most wouldn't. Especially if you're driving over a mountain pass every, every time. Uh, in one of the snowiest places in the country. Well, that's what my sister does every day. She's a school teacher, lives in Lake Tahoe. She teaches outside of Lake Tahoe. So every day for school, she drives up over the mountain, back down the mountain to, the, to the, her school. And then every day when she drives home, she has to drive and she drops off her son at a different school. She has to drive back up the mountain and over. And there, there are times that they have several feet of snow in Lake Tahoe but the school she teaches at, which is like 45 minutes an hour away, they don't have any snow because it's over the mountain, kind of in the desert area. So 
Uh, she never gets school canceled, har hardly ever. And so, but we were talking one day and a couple years ago, and she said to me out of the blue, she goes, Clint, uh, how lucky can I be? And she was talking about her drive to school. She said, how lucky can I be that every day I get to, after work, every day I get to drive into one of the most beautiful places in the whole country. And again, it was just, that was just her saying, and it's how lucky can I be that every day I get to drive into one of the most beautiful places in the country. And if you've ever been to Lake Tahoe, as we've been there several times, and when you drive in to where she lives, it's beautiful. You know, you go over the mountain and there's this, you know, beautiful lake and the snow-covered mountains. It's just a, a way of, of looking at it. I, not that I got to drive through the snow, not that I got to drive 45 minutes or an hour a day, but I get to drive into one of the most beautiful places in the country. When I was in uh, college and seminary, and like a few other of the pastors here probably, uh, I was at a Christian college and then seminary, we had to go to chapel two, three days a week, whatever it was, I don't, I don't remember. And a lot of the students dreaded it. It would sit in the back and either try to fall asleep or do homework, but you had to go to chapel and usually they took attendance and if you didn't, there was some kind of you know, consequences for that. But after a while, I was probably one of the ones that kind of dreaded it at first too. And I was at Malone College in Canton, but we, we had a lot of good chapel speakers. And it just dawned on me one day if I, sorry, I don't want to fall off here. So um, it dawned on me one day, don't move too much. Okay, so um, it dawned on me one day, why not make the most of it if I got to be here? So I would start sitting up front at the chapel services. I'd sit like in the second row and I would take notes and I'd listen to the speaker. I thought if I got to be here, I might as well make the, if I, if I got to be here, I might as well make the most of it. You know, I get to learn, I get to, to, to hear these speakers every week that, that many people won't get to, you know, listen to very often. And I had that opportunity. When I, I, I taught at, um, I've taught at the local pastor's licensing school for 15 years. Actually, when I went through licensing school, Pastor Larry was the dean of uh, licensing school at that time. And every new pastor in the United Methodist Church in our conference has to go to the week of licensing school. It's a week long. The day starts around 7 in the morning and ends around 11 at night. And it's, it's, it's pretty grueling. It's a pretty grueling week. And, and some kind of dread it. And I would say, when, when I'm teaching class to the students at licensing school, at the very beginning, I say, look, you got to be here, you know, you might as well make the most of it. And look at it as, you know, you get this opportunity to have a full week of basically um, boot camp on how to be a pastor. You get, it's all, it's all jammed in in one week, but you get to do this. Not that you got to do it, but that you get to do it. When I coached basketball, and, and most of it was junior high basketball at the Christian school next door. It wasn't next door at that time, but we, um, we would say to the kids, you know, the kids would complain sometimes about they got to go to practice. Well, anybody involved in sports or dancing or whatever, they, they got to practice. And I would say to the kids, I don't know if I use these words, but don't look at it that you got to go to practice, but that you get to go to practice. You get to become a better player. You get to exercise. You get to hang out with your friends. You get to have more fun because the better you are at basketball or really any sport, the more fun it should be for you, the, the better you get at it. It's just a, a way of looking at things. When Ann and I were youth leaders, the one year we had a, a, a girl, she was a senior in high school, her name was uh, Kara, Kara Millard, she's Kara Schroeder now, but it was her senior year and her parents told her, you have to go to youth group for a month. And she was a senior, she had never been involved in youth group and she didn't want to go. And, and she, so she determined that she was going to, if she had to go and be there for a month, she was going to give me, the youth pastor, the hardest time she could. And she was on the debate team at Jackson High School and that's what she did. She came in there ready to debate. And so she, she thought if she got to do this, she's going to give me a hard time basically. Well, after that first month ended, I don't know again if Kara used these words, but she became the leader of the youth group that year. And, and, and her attitude was that I get to go to youth group. 
Not that I got to go to youth group, but that I get to go to youth group. And now, that was 30 years ago. She's still the youth pastor at um, Church of the Lakes up in North Canton. She's been the youth pastor there for well over 20 years. She's still the youth pastor there, and she's just sharing the love of Christ with students. She's been doing it for all these years. And it was a, it's a, it was a difference in attitude, not that I got to, but that I get to be a part of this youth group. Here at our church, here at our church, it's a new place, something new, everything's good, yeah, so. Um, here at our church, um, our children's Sunday school teachers, we have outstanding children's Sunday school teachers and they're, they're just a blessing. And I can tell you that they're not up at nine o'clock on Saturday night saying, oh man, I gotta figure out a lesson for these kids tomorrow. They plan way in advance. And again, they might not use these words, but their attitude is, I get to teach kids at the church on Sunday morning. I get these kids coming into my class and, 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 and the kids know that and the kids love the teachers and those who help. And it's, it's that attitude of that opportunity and the privilege to really make a difference in their lives and make a positive difference in their lives. This week I was asked to speak at um, a, a Catholic, mostly men's group about the Center for Hope. Another person from our church was asked to speak to the um, Chamber of Commerce because we just joined the Chamber of Commerce as a church and, and he was able to go there and speak to the Chamber of Com Commerce about the Center of Hope. And when I was asked to do that, now there were so many things going on this week. <laughs> There's been so many things going on the last few months, actually the last couple of years. And one of these days, you know, you, you, you may take a break, but that's okay. Um, but I, I could have said, you know what, we're, we're just too busy, you know. But, but I really did look at it. There's, here's this Catholic group inviting a Protestant pastor to come and share about the Center for Hope. And so for me, it wasn't, I got to go there at lunchtime on Thursday, it was, I get to go there on th at Thursday at lunchtime and share the vision and share what God is doing here among us and in the, in the community. And that's the, the, the person that went to the Chamber of Commerce, they said the same thing. There was such an excitement there among the chamber members for this new facility and new opportunities here in Wintersville and in our community. All of us here today it's not that we got to be here, it's that we get to be here. We get to worship, we get to grow in faith, we get to have fellowship with one another. There's a story that I came across years ago, um, and it, it's just, it's very brief. It says, there's a story that when the famed English architect, Sir Christopher Wren, was directing the building of St. Paul's Cathedral in London, some of the workers were interviewed by a journalist who asked them, what are you doing here? They were building this grand cathedral in London, and the first one answered by saying, I'm cutting stone for three shillings a day. The second one answered, I'm putting in 10 hours a day on this job. But the third one replied, I'm helping Sir Christopher Wren build the greatest cathedral in Great Britain for the glory of God. They were all doing the same thing. But the third one had such a different attitude about it, a different outlook, a different perspective. I'm helping Sir Christopher Wren build the greatest cathedral in Great Britain for the glory of God. What we're doing here, we are part of this new facility, this new Center for Hope to help carry out ministry in the name of Jesus for the glory of God, for the upbuilding of his kingdom. The scripture passage, Colossians 3, Colossians 3, 17. And whatever you do, whatever you do, in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever we do, in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart 
as working for the Lord, not for people, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ that you are serving. Our new center for hope, we could look at it, and, and some people have told me this, we got this big debt that we now got to pay down. Now they maybe didn't use the word got, but that's what they were saying. We got this big debt that we now got to pay down. That's one way of looking at it, and there's a truth to that. Or we could say, we get to impact our community for Christ now and for generations to come. They're both true, amen. We could say we, we got this huge liability or we get to have this wonderful asset, this asset for ministry and mission. I'm just gonna share with you part of a poem some, most of you probably have seen this before. It's um, passed around the inter internet different times. And again, it has to do with Outlook. The, I don't, I'm not even sure the exact title of the poem. I think it's thank God for th this messy house or something to that effect. Lord, thank you for the sink of dirty dishes. Why? Because it means we have plenty to eat. There are many who go hungry. Thank you for this pile of dirty laundry. Why? We have plenty of nice clothes to wear. And there are many who do not have any clothes. Some of you are here saying amen to the pile of dirty laundry, right? I'm not looking at anybody specifically. So I want to thank you, Lord, for these unmade beds. They were so warm and comfortable last night. I know there are those who have no bed. Thanks to you, Lord, for this bathroom complete with all the splattered mirrors, soggy towels, and dirty tub. They are so convenient. Thank you for this finger-smudged refrigerator that needs cleaning. It has served us faithfully for many years. It is full of cold drinks and enough leftovers for two or three meals. Thank you, Lord, for this oven that absolutely must be cleaned today. It has baked so many things over the years. Thank you, Lord, for the tall grass in the yard that needs mowed. We all enjoy the yard. My kids are healthy and are able to run and play. The poem goes on like that. And it's the idea of got to or get to. An outlook of just kind of a, a, a negative outlook or one that looks at the potential and the possibilities through the power of the Spirit and with the Lord's help. Thank you. Even though my, the routine of my job is often monotonous, Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to work. There are many who have no job. I got to go to work or I get to go to work. If you look at the scriptures today from 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, these, this is the main passage in the New Testament on Christian giving. And we're not focusing today on, on, on financial giving, even though that's a part of it. Just listen to these words from the from the. Uh, New Testament. And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. Those were the churches of Philippi. We have the book of Philippians, Thessalonica. We have the, the letter to, the, to that church and then the church of Berea. Those were the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. Those are phrases that do not usually appear together in the same sentence. Severe trial, overflowing joy. Extreme poverty, rich generosity. They had a, a Christ-centered perspective. Their, their eyes were on Jesus. They were fixed on Jesus and what really matters. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. They could have easily been churches that were got to churches. We got to do this. Or how are we going to do this? But they weren't. Those churches that Paul's speaking of, those Macedonian churches were get to churches. We get to do this. 
We get to give, we get to sacrifice so that others would come to know the Lord Jesus as well. So others, that others would grow in their faith as well. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us. They, they got it. We could say they get it. It was loving God, putting God first, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, loving God and loving others. Loving God and loving others. And seeing the opportunity to serve God by serving others in Jesus' name. They gave themselves first to the Lord, then by the will of God also to us. So we urge Titus, just as he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. It was a response to God's grace. God's grace poured out in their life and in response, not that we got to, but that we get to. We get to make a difference in the lives of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. And here's my judgment about what is best for you in this matter. Last year you were the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. It was that we get to, not that we got to. Now finish the work so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it according to your means. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has and not according to what one does not have. It's not getting all caught up in what we do have or what we don't have. But it is getting caught up in the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit. When we submit our lives to him, our time, our talents, our treasures, everything we are, when we submit ourselves to the Lord and realize that God can work in an amazing way through our lives, you know, wh whether we see ourselves as, you know, you know, that we have all these opportunities or we have all these abilities, or, or some of us may say, I don't really have anything to offer. In Christ, in Christ we do. All of us get to be a part of the kingdom work of God. There is no need for me to write to you about this service to the Lord's people, for I know your eagerness to help, and I have been boasting about it to the Macedonians, telling them that since last year you and AKI were ready to give, and your enthusiasm has stirred most of them to action. It's amazing what we've been hearing around the community. A lot of you have been hearing this as well. We, we see people, and, and when we had the open houses so far, most people, the word that I heard the most at the open houses was impressive. That's the word that kept coming up over and over again. It, it is impressive, but it's not about being impressive. It's about, about ministry and service and impact for the kingdom. Our enthusiasm has stirred others to action. That's what he is saying here to those in Corinth. And it's true, when Christians are alive in the spirit and when churches are, are you know, love and care for one another and there's a spirit of unity and there's a spirit of, of purpose and mission and moving forward for the Lord, that spreads and it spreads in our community. And that's what we, we really believe will happen here. Not that we got to, but that we get to have this great opportunity to make such an impact. Paul goes on, so I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to visit you in advance and finish the arrangements for the generous gift you have promised. Then it will be ready as a generous gift, not as one grudgingly given. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Over the last five years, this whole process, we've prayed and we visioned and we talked and we you know, had task groups and we did all of this work. And, and some folks said, you know what? Maybe not right now <laughs> because there's a lot, you know, going on in our country. There's a lot going on in our world. There's a lot going on in our gender, in our denomination. You know, maybe we should just take it easy. Or they didn't use these words, but the idea was so sparingly. <laughs> you know, we're a good church. Let's just kind of keep doing what we're doing. Keep, keep sailing along and it, it will be okay. But the overwhelming feeling was, and again, these words I don't think were ever used, let's not just, let's not just float along. Let's move forward and let's move onward and let's move upward for the kingdom. 
for our community, for current generations, and for generations to come. Let's sow generously. Whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. That's not I got to, that's I get to. I get to help others. I get to make a difference. I get to shine Christ's light. I get to help change lives. I get to plant seeds of faith. And then the result at the end of 2 Corinthians, the service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. And I believe that we can say that now today. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Not, I got to go to church, I get to go to church. As Christians, we get to help and serve and give time, talents, and treasures and make an eternal difference. Before I read the final scripture today, I just, I, I know I've shared this, this song with you before. Don't worry, I'm not gonna sing. I'm not ready to try that new. <laughs> not gonna sing, but the song that has really impacted my life really for a, a lot of years, it's probably from the 1980s or maybe early 90s Christian song by a person named Carolyn Ahrens. And the song's called Seize the Day. And there are four verses in the song. And I'm just, I think it's the second verse. The second verse says, I know a doctor, a fine young physician, left his six-figure job for a mission position. He's healing the sick in an African clinic. He works in the dirt and writes home to the cynics. We work through the night so most every day as we watch the sunrise, we can say, seize the day. Seize whatever you can because life slips away just like hourglass sand. Seize the day and pray for grace from God's hand and nothing will stand in your way. Seize the day. Seize the day. Not I got to, but I get to. Whatever you do, in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for people, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ we are serving. It is the Lord Christ we are serving, not that we got to, but that we get to. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord, you did not have to love us. Jesus, you did not have to give up so much and leave your throne in heaven and come down to earth. You did not have to teach and serve and sacrifice. You did not have to suffer and die on the cross for the sins of the world. But as we sang this morning, for God so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Lord, even if we're going through difficult times, even if we're going through struggles, whatever they might be, Help us to realize that in Christ, individually, as families, and as a church family, not to look at it as we got to, but Lord, change our perspective and our outlook in the attitude of our hearts and minds that we get to. In the power of the Spirit, we get to serve you each day. We get to serve you by serving others 
each and every day. We get to be a part of this center for hope that's going to make such a difference for your kingdom. Lord, we thank you and we praise you and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.